Hello, my name's Sue Palmer and I write fiction for children and recently I've been delighted to team up with the Friends of Watlington Library to run a series of short creative writing videos called Story Starters. And at the end of these videos we gave you a challenge to come up with your own short story and the competition produced some fantastic stories. After talking about developing your characters and a world that was exciting and a plot that challenged your characters, we had one very clear winner of the competition. So congratulations to Toby and the mystery of Monster Island. You created a character that was memorable, a setting that was dynamic, and as I'm going to read to you in a moment, a plot that was fast paced and exciting. So congratulations to Toby, and I'm now going to read Toby's winning entry. So, this is the mystery of Monster Island. A cheer full of joy echoed across a country airfield in Japan. It came from inside a small Cessna plane where Zane, a 16-year-old boy had just earned his pilot's licence. Zane was an unusual boy. He liked his own company, getting lost in books about travel and adventure. His favourite food was sushi. But his passion in life was flying and planes. Now he could not wait to do his first solo flight as a licensed pilot. The next morning, Zane packed up some lunch and set off to the airport. He fueled up his plane, hopped in and asked air control for permission to take off. He set off in the direction of the Pacific Ocean. Once he was up in the air, Zane practiced his loop the loop as he flew further away from home and towards the horizon in front. Suddenly, a big black cloud appeared in front of him. It loomed over the plane like a huge, black, spiny monster. A thunderbolt crashed out of the cloud and struck his plane, sending it tumbling down through the sky. Just as he was going to hit the sea, his engine jumped back into life and restarted. With smoke billowing out of his engines, the plane limped along, barely clearing the enormous waves below. Ahead, Zane suddenly saw land and steered the plane towards it. Finally, the plane stuttered its last breath and crashed into the beach. Zane jumped out of the plane, apparently unharmed, and grabbed his bag just as the engines overheated and blew up. All Zane could do was stare in despair at his burning plane. Then all went blank. Zane awoke to find himself lying on a sandy beach. Beside him, his plane had stopped smoking and all that was left was a burnt out shell. Slowly, Zane stood up and desperately looked around for any clues as to where he was and if help was at hand. But nothing was there except for a sandy beach leading to tropical jungle with a volcano sticking up out of the middle. Cleverly thinking about all the survival books he'd read, he decided he'd better look for food and shelter. Zane headed off into the humid jungle to find anything edible, fresh water and items that could be used for shelter. Soon he came across a batch of red berries hanging down from a large tree. They reminded him of cherries, so he greedily picked a handful and tasted one. It tasted very bitter, so he spat it out and threw the rest on the ground. Zane started feeling queasy and his vision went blurry. He desperately felt around him to find something to steady himself. But instead, his foot slipped and he fell down a hole. Zane fell and fell and fell until he splashed into a body of water. He slowly drifted along, wondering where it would take him. His tummy was still aching, so he cupped his hand into the water and took a refreshing sip. 
The water appeared to be fresh and made his tummy ache go away. Zane suddenly realised the water was speeding up and he desperately tried to swim to the side. It was too late. The current was too strong and swept him along. Down he was pushed towards a crashing sound. There was a waterfall ahead. Whoosh! Zane was swept down the waterfall into a plunge pool. Exhausted, Zane managed to swim to the edge of the pool and slowly heaved himself out of the water. He lay there for a few minutes to recover before quickly jumping up and looking for a way out. Zane found a tiny crawl hole in a large pile of rocks. It was just big enough for him to squeeze through, so he took the risk and dived in. Before long he saw light and then he found himself on a muddy beach with a shipwreck on it. Dragging his feet, Zane slowly walked to the shipwreck and clambered aboard. There he found a can of tuna, which he greedily ate, and an old dirty mattress. Exhausted, he fell onto it and went to sleep. <clears throat> the next morning, Zane woke up with lots of determination to get off the island. He found a box of stale cereal, but ate it anyway. After breakfast, he looked around the boat and discovered it was not too badly damaged, so he decided he could fix it up and hopefully sail away in it when the tide rose. Zane wandered along the beach, looking for driftwood that he could mend the hole in the ship's bow with, but he couldn't find any. He therefore headed into the jungle to see what wood he could find there. Just as he'd managed to gather enough wood to fix his boat, he felt a rumble beneath his feet. Zane ignored this the first time, but when it happened again, louder and harder, he ran back towards the coastline. As Zane reached the beach clearing, he looked behind him to see the volcano shooting flames high into the sky and starting to pour out red hot lava. He hurried to the ship with nails and a hammer he'd found below deck. It was difficult to concentrate with the sight of the erupting volcano in the corner of his eye. But suddenly he realised the job was done. The problem now was that the tide was not high enough. While Zane was thinking what to do, the volcano exploded with a huge bang blowing off its top. Out of this, an enormous, black, shiny, eight-legged monster rose, which turned and glared towards the boat. Quick as a flash, Zane started digging the boat out of the sand and forming a channel for the water to reach the boat. The rising tide's wave soon reached the boat and started pulling it out towards the sea. Zane quickly jumped aboard and tried to start up its engine. The engine spluttered and refused to come to life, but Zane was not giving up. He tried again and the engine kicked into action, leaving behind the monster who was now close by on the muddy beach. Zane sighed a huge sigh of relief. Little did Zane know that the monster could fly. Zane's relief was soon replaced with shock as a huge monster loomed over the boat. As the monster swooped down, it plucked the boat from the sea in one of its eight arms and zoomed up into the clouds. Zane thought quickly and picked the hammer up. He furiously and repeatedly started whacking the hammer on the monster's arm. Suddenly the monster let go, sending the ship falling towards the sea. It landed with a huge splash, fortunately the right way up and not too damaged. The monster was now really angry and started to spit out fire from its mouth. It swooped down towards the boat. Zane knew he had to do something quickly, otherwise he would be toast. Zane quickly searched the floor around him for a weapon. He found an old grenade from which he removed the pin and threw it as hard as he could towards the monster's mouth. Amazingly, it was on target. The monster's open mouth closed around the grenade and it swallowed it. With one big kaboom, the monster blew up into thousands of small pieces that landed all over the ship and surrounding sea. Zane wiped his face clean of the monster's flesh and quickly stamped out any small fires on the boat. He then set his compass towards home and lurched the ship into action, hoping this old boat would get him there. 
After two days at sea, Zane could start to feel water around his feet. The boat was starting to sink. His repairs had started to fall apart and give way to the water. Zane urged the boat on, but it was no good. He was going to have to abandon ship and swim home. He quickly jumped off, and as, as he did so, he saw land in front. He was nearly there. An hour later, his boat had sunk completely, but then his feet felt ground. He had made it home. The end. Wow, what a fantastic story. Congratulations, Toby, for a brilliant effort and well done. Thank you.